Thanks to the mic, put your hands together for Frank Sanchez! On the importance of fanboys for feminists, a title which we will revisit twice more before the end of this poem 4, I am afraid far too many folks will not understand this the first time, and I do not mean to offend you with that statement, nor is it my intent to be unnecessarily obtuse, but I want to write this convoluted poem, or maybe it's not convoluted, I think it's kind of clever, yet I'm still worried people won't get it, so I'm sorry, I guess. You see, I haven't met many fanboy feminists, but I imagine some must exist, so I recently developed a fanboy feminist litmus test. Honestly, this test will work for any nerdy feminist, but for the purposes of this poem, I've chosen to focus on those of us most often centered in discussions of nerdiness first. Find a person familiar with the works of Joss Whedon. Second, ask them if they consider Joss Whedon to be a feminist. Now, before we move on, I'll admit that one of feminism's finest features is the fact that folks can self-identify, but this persistent, insistent that Xander Harris is a registered trademark nice guy speaks louder than words. Plus, I don't know if you've heard Joss Whedon's recently expressed opinion on the term feminism, but to me, it seems a little absurd. So back to the test. Is Joss Whedon a feminist? If they just say yes, then they're probably not a feminist. If they just say no, that's a little better, but let's be honest, you still don't know because feminists rarely see things in such simple terms. What I mean is, feminists for the most part seem to prefer qualifying statements to simple, straightforward answers. Perhaps this test is the perfect example of this. I mean, I am a feminist, and I love Buffy far more than most, but Joss Whedon's feminism must be called into question or at the very least, qualified, but even that's beside the point as this poems on the importance of fanboys for feminists, and feminists are like the best metaphors deeply invested in exploring multiple meanings, and fanboy feminists may be few and far between, but fanboys, like feminists or metaphors, can mean more than one thing, and if you ask me, fanboys can be a feminist best friend, it all depends on your definition. The Oxford English Dictionary defines fanboys as male fans especially those obsessed with comics, music, film, or science fiction. On the other hand, my eighth grade English teacher, Miss Roy, taught me that fanboys is an acronym for for and nor but or yet so. The coordinating conjunctions. Let me spell it out for you all nice and slow. F, for, A, and, N, nor, B, but, O, or, Y, yet, S, so. Fanboys are the coordinating conjunctions, and boy, am I a fan of the coordinating conjunctions. I mean, ands. For hours on end, like some never-ending improv exercise, yes and, yes and, yes and, no, I do not condone Sir Mix-a-Lot's Baby's Got Back, but, and this is a big but, I like big butts, and I cannot lie, I am a feminist, and I have to adore fanboys for and nor but or yet so for. The coordinating conjunction allow me to go deeper into each statement I make, and, make no mistake, I do not mean to suggest this is the best way to engage one's ideas, nor do I wish to put forth fanboys in an exhaustive list of conjunctions because, I wouldn't want to forget the subordinate conjunctions like because, but this poem is often too long, or maybe it's the perfect length, yet I'm still worried it's convoluted, so I'll conclude it with this. The coordinating conjunctions are key for feminist discourse, thus the importance of fanboys for feminists. Uh -huh.